Ah, Home Alone, the perennial holiday classic about a soulless boy on a relentless quest to murder two impossibly durable burglars, who learns along the way that the true meaning of Christmas isn't maiming strangers with vicious saw-like traps, though that helps, but instead befriending a strong old man with a shovel who can do your dirty work and murders for you. I love this movie, what's not to love? But this peerless gem of a film doesn't just succeed because of a child committing unspeakable acts of violence against adult men, but because it's immaculate Lily crafted with love and joy, much like the traps that this child uses to commit unspeakable acts of violence against adult men. Here are 12 brilliant details hidden in Home Alone. Number one, let's start off with a detail that's so well known that it's nearly as classic as Home Alone itself. It's easy to believe that the McAllisters try to think of precocious Kevin as little as possible and that his situation of being left home alone, as it were, is as simple as them being caught up in a blissful Kevin free moment. But the Clan McAllister for getting young Kevin actually does stem from a singular origin that is very easy to miss. When the family is cleaning up the big spill at dinner, a careful eye will notice Kevin's plane ticket being mixed up in the milk and thrown away into the trash. Suddenly, Fuller's feeble bladder isn't the worst liquid disaster that the family's dealing with. Number two. The McAllister's home may seem like some mythical monument to Christmas, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you that it's a real place in Illinois. But what you probably don't know is that Peter McAllister's luggage is tagged with the actual address of the real-life Home Alone house. According to Zillow, it last sold for $1.5 million in 2012, a hefty price to pay for an incredibly public address, and that pizza guy who's always knocking down your statue. No tip for that guy, am I right? No, you should always tip. You should always tip. Number three, when Harry is casing the neighborhood, he's dressed up like a cop, and it's a completely believable costume, up to the point where you notice that he's wearing a tie clip that is shaped like a gun, like a big old honkin' revolver. I'm just sad that we don't get to see the tie that Harry normally wears with that. It's probably stupid. Number four. One of Kevin's early wins against the Wet Bandits is when he blends into a nativity scene to hide from them. But if you look closely in the shot just before the reveal, you can see clearly that Kevin has grabbed a curtain from the left side of the arch. Really, he should stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, there's nothing holy about that kid. Number five. Speaking of narrow evasions, another early scene features Kevin nearly becoming driveway meat beneath the Wet Bandit's big old van. While filming regulations let you burn through Joe Pesci's and Daniel Stern's like they're puppies or kittens in Milo and Otis, the liability of working with a child comes with a little extra red tape. If you pay attention to the exhaust in this scene, you'll notice that the clip is actually running in reverse. Macaulay Culkin was never actually at risk of being hit. It's not quite as interesting when you play the clip at normal speed. He's doing some great backwards walking acting though. That's some, that's some Twin Peaks level stuff, folks. Number six. Jumping ahead to Home Alone 2 for just a second, you remember how the once wet, now sticky bandits accidentally grab a kid on the street who isn't Kevin? Well, they're not just grabbing kids willy-nilly here, that's a different crime. They make their mistake because the kid is wearing the exact same hat that Kevin wears in the first movie. I suppose Kevin's visage would be burned into their memories, along with all the other things that he's burned into their bodies. Number seven. Though we've been focusing a lot on the visuals, this movie's also laden with a lot of intelligent audio decisions. Like this, when we first meet old man Marley. We hear a few bars of Dias Irae, a Latin language requiem and a song about death that makes me regret not remembering anything from the four years of Latin I took in high school. But later, Kevin has had the opportunity to actually get to know Marley, and we hear Carol of the Bells, a song about probably other regrets I have. Well, you can forget that you love them. And you can hurt them, and they can hurt you. And that's not just because you're young. An attentive ear will notice that the notes are the same, but they've taken on a new tone. You know, now that Kevin has found a kinship in violence with this shovel-wielding badass. Number eight, can we talk about Fuller again for a second? The only kid scarier than Kevin? If we look at this scene where the bedwetting cousin gets pushed against a wall, you could spot the exact moment that this real chair is swapped out for one that's made of a much more child actor face friendly rubber. He could smack him in the head all day with that rubber chair and he'd be just peachy. Now, if only somebody would get that kid some rubber sheets. 
Number nine. Speaking of Fuller, Kevin mentions to Marley that he I have a friend who got nailed because there was a rumor he wore dinosaur pajamas. Sure, maybe he's being coy and he's talking about himself, but it's also just as likely that he's talking about Fuller, who we see in Home Alone 2 wearing dinosaur pajamas. That sounds about right. You didn't even have to tell me, I just guessed it. Number 10, ah, uh, one last entry from Home Alone 2. Chris Columbus might have directed the first two Home Alone movies, but they were John Hughes productions. In fact, this shot in Home Alone 2 is framed in such a perfect way that the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center is framed to look just like the John Hughes logo. Did you know that John Hughes had a logo? No! Did they know that this tree was framed between those two windows? Also probably no, but convenient, convenient, too convenient? Let's just say yeah. Number 11, let's get back to Home Alone 1, shall we? After the bandits have ransacked the house, we see Marv stick a snow globe on the van's dashboard with a piece of gum. This isn't a one-off gross decision. He has several snow globes on the dash. They're all trophies from previous homes that they've robbed, or as the police like to call it, evidence. Get rid of those, Marv, wipe the prints. I'm not even a criminal and I know this. I don't even do crimes. Wink. I mean, if I did, I would have wiped the prints. And finally, number 12. A final note that's deceptively small but very important is Old Man Marley's hand. When we see him early on at the grocery store, he's got a big bleeding bandage. But when Kevin and Marley talk things out in the church, that giant bandage has become a small band-aid. And when we see his hand at the end, it's completely healed. Yes, I know that's how human bodies work, folks, but when you consider the context of each scene, the healing wound is clearly meant to be an externalization of him considering, reconciling, and mending the rift between him and his family. And that's the magic of Home Alone. Come for the cartoon violence and traps, but stay for the thoroughly considered journey of the value of family and interpersonal relationships but also for Daniel Stern getting hit in the balls. Powie!